In addition to the structural divisions, um, the structures that make up the nervous system, I also want to introduce the functional divisions. Um, so this is a way of classifying the nervous system um, by function. Um, and this is actually an overview, not just of this week, but pretty much the rest of the semester. Um, the, the different components in terms of sensory um, autonomic nervous system that we're going to be going into. Um, but before we kind of compare those different regions, I want to start with something kind of a little more basic. Um, so remember, we've talked about stimulus response pathways, so how a stimulus can cause a response. Um, and often that can be result in feedback to either shut off or amplify amplify the, the process, um, but it doesn't always. And here's a case where it doesn't, right? It's just a stimulus and a response, which is a lot of what our body does. Um, so could you diagram this? Um, if, if you can, pause and try to do as much as you can here, um, but I will, I will go through it. You might start wherever you know something. Um, so this is going to be our integrator or control center over here. In this case, it's the central nervous system. Um, it's not gonna be endocrine. We're just gonna put CNS. We're gonna keep this fairly simple right now. Um, so the stimulus might be something like a, a prick to the hand, um, a knife stab. Um, let's keep it a little bit not so scary. Um, a pin prick on hand. This stimulus is detected by sensor receptors. That's the sensor or receptor. So sensor receptors, in this case, um, for pain, they're actually called nociceptors. So I'm getting up maybe a little bit specific with some things here. You don't need to know this now. We will actually come back to, um, in the sensory system, types of sensory receptors. This is a type of sensory receptor. It's the thing that detects that pain, and this is actually going to be a neuron that sends the signal to the central nervous system. A unipolar um, neuron is the input signal, actually a sensory neuron. Output signal, any idea what this is? It's a motor neuron. Because in this case, we're going to um, contact the target or effector is going to be a muscle that's going to move. So response to a pinprick would be like a jolting back. Um, so target or effector could be skeletal muscle. I mean, would be skeletal muscle maybe the brachialis or biceps brachii to flex the hand back. Um, the response is going to be to move the hand. So in this system here, which is a lot of review, maybe not the nociceptor specifically, um, maybe not the, the names of the input and, and output signal, but a lot of this stimulus response pathway is review. This is going to provide an overview, a framework for where we're going, but it's going to get a little more complicated. So let me show you the same thing here, but with a little bit more um, detail, a little bit more, right? Uh, so stimulus response pathway um, in the, the CNS, also involving the peripheral nervous system. So the one we just drew, um, I think I'm going to do that one we just drew in a different color, that um, kind of motor, that, that pathway we just drew out. We had the stimulus, that's the start, actually not drawn here, targets the receptors, this is one. Um, here's our input signal to the central nervous system, output signal, and then we were just now talking about skeletal muscles being the effector. That is the somatic nervous system, um, typically consciously controlled um, things we're aware of. Same thing with the, 
the sensation. We were aware of that sensation. And you know about some of this details of the signaling already. Um, ACH, acetylcholine, is released onto the skeleton muscle to cause contraction. Um, so we've talked about the skeletal muscles and um, here is also the other divisions of the nervous system. So we've got sensory and motor. Those were in that previous image as well. We also have some breaking down beyond that. So we have somatic and autonomic. Um, somatic is consciously controlled typically Autonomic is typically automatic. Um, typically, we're not thinking about this. It's also called visceral. The visceral nervous system, your internal viscera are involved. It is involuntary. Um, and it's divided further into parasympathetic and sympathetic. We've got a whole chapter on that later on. Um, the control of smooth muscles, those internal organs, cardiac muscle, the heart, um, glands, and, and other things as well. We will focus on some of those more than others. Okay. So you will see this diagram again. I'm going to show it as we go through some of these components. Um, right now, I actually want to draw out for you a, um, a diff these same things again, but with kind of a, a different way of categorizing the systems. Okay, so two big categories in terms of functional divisions are sensory and motor. These also can be called afferent and efferent. And that's because these motor signals are leaving the central nervous system, going out to the body, exiting, efferent is exiting, afferent is, is the other one, um, going towards the nervous system. So actually I could draw that out here. Um, sensory system, afferent refers to information towards the central nervous system, motor is efferent from the central nervous system. Sensory and motor information are both processed within the central nervous system as well. Um, okay, for both of these divisions, and this is something that wasn't shown in the previous slide for sensory, we can have um, autonomic, which is also called visceral, and somatic. This part wasn't shown on that previous slide, but sensory information can be broken down into those two subcategories, which are basically consciously controlled or, or sorry, consciously um, perceived or not. So I'll come back to that in just a moment, some examples. Let me write this one down as well. And then the somatic over here. So we've already completely covered the information we're going to this semester on um, the control at the skeletal muscle. That's what this is here. Right, we did that. We will still be talking about somatic nervous system in terms of the control of motor function um, within the central nervous system pathways from this down to the spinal cord to control those motor neurons. So we will be doing more um, this semester, basically, with kind of this pathway. But we talked about skeletal muscle. Um, autonomic nervous system, that's what we're going to be talking about it towards the end of the semester. So this would be um, control of, right? Because we're talking about motor. So we'll put control of the heart, glands, smooth muscle, things that we don't, aren't aware our body is controlling primarily. Um, like I said on the previous slide, this division is divided into the parasympathetic nervous system and the autonomic nervous, I'm sorry, <laughs> parasympathetic nervous 
parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system. Um, we're not going to go into those now, so I'm not going to write them out. But um, I will actually just put this for now. This is your rest and digest, just to know the difference between these. So kind of typically thought of as more kind of calming um, rest and digest when you're when you're resting and this one being fight or flight. We'll go into more details on these. Well, some details in a different chapter. Okay, um, over on the other side, we, st we also have the somatic and autonomic nervous systems divided up here. So this would be somatic things we can perceive like touch. Okay, touch um, as well as the special senses. Most of the senses, well, literally what we like, what we see, what we hear, taste, those are through somatic, the somatic nervous system. And we're aware of most of those. Okay, let me make this the same color here versus the autonomic nervous system in terms of autonomic sensory is going to be um, uh, the sensation related to what do you think? Heart, smooth muscle, glands. things that we're not consciously aware of. So when I say sense, sensing these things, um, we don't feel it, right? So we might have a stretch that happens in our digestive system that we don't feel, but um, tells our central nervous system we need to increase digestive enzyme production. Control of internal processes in terms of signaling internal stimuli um, and then responding to them. So a stimulus response, but within our internal viscera that luckily we don't have to think about, kind of nice. Okay, um, that's what I wanna do now for the functional divisions. And again, um, this week is cell to cell signaling in terms of nervous system. So we'll kind of be focusing on how cells signal each other as well as the cells that connect to these divisions um, kind of broadly. Um, we will have chapters on the somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system specifically um, and also special senses later on. Okay, learning check.